What if the Goths weren't who we thought they were? For centuries, their name echoed through history as the ultimate barbarians. Fierce warriors, pillagers of Rome, the shadows at the edge of the empire. That was the story the Romans told, and we believed it. But beneath that fearsome image, a very different truth was waiting. One written not in blood, but in bone. Because now, in laboratories across Europe, ancient DNA is speaking. And what it says will rewrite the story of the Goths forever. You see, there was an old legend, recorded by a 6th century historian named Jordans. He claimed the Goths came not from the dark forests of Germania, but from the far north, an island called Scanza, Scandinavia. For centuries, scholars scoffed. A convenient myth, they said. A story of noble origins, crafted by Gothic elites. After all, how could the brutal Gothic war bands who sacked Rome be descended from peaceful Nordic farmers? It didn't fit the narrative, but the bones tell a different story. From forgotten cemeteries along the Vistula River, scientists have extracted DNA from skeletons buried nearly 2,000 years ago. Men, women, children, and in their genes is a signature. Not Germanic, not Slavic, but unmistakably Scandinavian a lineage from the Iron Age north, the land of fjords and longboats, the kind of ancestry no Roman chronicler could have imagined. So what does this mean? Were the Goths really seaborne migrants, weaving their bloodline southward, centuries before they stormed the empire? And if so, how many other migrations lie hidden beneath our feet? Could forgotten journeys still shape the blood in our veins today? because in one Polish burial ground the first undeniable proof is about to emerge, and what it reveals will turn the next chapter of this story upside down. In the forests of northern Poland, they found the circles, massive rings of stone, half buried beneath the moss and earth. No writing, no two markers, no record of who built them or why. Archaeologists called it the Wilbar culture, a name for an enigma, for decades. The graves that lay inside these circles told no tales. Bodies buried without weapons, without warrior honors. Not the image of savage Gothic raiders, not at all. And then came the DNA. From the fragile bones of men and women buried here, scientists extracted the ancient code of their blood. And what emerged stunned them. Over 75% of their ancestry traced, not to local tribes, but to the distant north. Iron Age Scandinavia a genetic signature older than the stones themselves. Even more striking, the pattern was not random. The male lineages, their Y chromosomes, carried the mark of Nordic Bronze Age elites. Haplogroup I1, M253, the same line that once coursed through the veins of warrior kings beneath the northern skies. But their wives were different. Their maternal DNA revealed older European roots from long-settled Central European clans. A portrait began to form of Gothic men, migrants from the north, taking local women as they carved new lives in a foreign land. Yet still no weapons, no battle scars. Who were these men? What drove them to leave the cold waters of Scandinavia, to build stone circles and bury their dead here in silence? Because the deeper the scientists dug, the stranger the story became. Not a band of raiders, but a migrating people, a fusion of bloodlines. A mystery written in both stone and gene. But one question burned through it all unanswered. Why would these Norse migrants abandon their homeland? They didn't stop in Poland. By the third century, the stone circles were behind them. Ahead a new horizon. The endless grasslands of the Black Sea Steppe. It was here, beneath vast skies and shifting winds, that the Goths began to change. Archaeologists call it the Cherniakov culture. But this was no single people. In these lands, Gothic pottery lies beside Sarmatian horse gear, Roman glass beside Dacian ornaments, graves that blend pagan rites with imperial customs, a fusion of worlds and of blood. Because when scientists began pulling DNA from these ancient bones, the story shifted again. Gone was the tidy Scandinavian signature. In its place, a storm of lineages, genes from the steppe nomads, the Balkans, even traces of Roman provincials. The clean Gothic genome had exploded into a kaleidoscope. Yet through it all, one pattern remained. The men buried with elite grave goods, weapons, horse trappings, signs of rank, 
often still carried the northern lineages. The old I-1 YDNA. It seemed the Gothic elite still ruled. Even as their people mixed and merged, the bloodline of the northern kings held the reins. But beneath that thin patina of power, a new identity was forming. A culture no longer purely Gothic, nor purely Sarmatian, nor Roman. Something hybrid, something new. And as this melting pot spread across the steppe, the Goths faced a stark reality. Could a migrating people survive their own success? Because even as their influence grew, their bloodline was fading into the mix. And yet one question remained, whispered through bone and soil. Was the Gothic bloodline already lost? They weren't supposed to be here. Deep in the Balkans, beyond the old Gothic heartlands, beneath the crumbling frontier of the Roman Empire, archaeologists opened a burial at Viminatium, a Roman military town on the Danube. And what they found defied expectation. A man buried with honors. Among Roman citizens, soldiers, provincials. But his DNA told a different story. I-1 Z-141 a rare branch of the Nordic lineage, the same bloodline that once coursed through the Gothic elite, a northern ghost in a southern land. He wasn't alone. Across multiple graves, genetic outliers emerged, men with the deep imprint of Gothic ancestry, standing apart from the Balkan population around them. Yet something else had crept into their blood. R1A, a steppe lineage, woven through Sarmatian and nomadic tribes, a new blend born of migration, conquest, and survival. And around them, tension crackled. Gothic pagan rites whispered in the shadows, colliding with the rising tide of Roman Christianity. Two worlds, one body. A foreign bloodline under a Roman roof. But the most haunting question remained unspoken. As the storm gathered to the east, as the Huns, ruthless and unstoppable, began their march, what would become of these Gothic survivors? Would their ancient line vanish beneath the chaos to come? Or would it somehow endure? They called it Pannonia, the battered frontier of an empire in collapse. Here, in the shadow of the Carpathians, the Ostrogoths made their stand. A kingdom without walls. A people on borrowed land. And in the graveyards they left behind the past whispers. At first glance, a patchwork of lives. Roman provincials. Balkan locals. Wandering tribes but buried among them something older. In a grave at Balaton seems, by the cold waters of Lake Balaton, a warrior rests. Baal underscore 146. His bones tell a story no historian ever wrote. His DNA, a relic of the North. A nearly unmixed Gothic genome. Scandinavian ancestry, preserved across generations of exile and war. His Y chromosome, I-1, the ancient mark of Nordic fathers. Another warrior nearby carries G2A, another Gothic line, traced back to the wheelbark migrations. Yet just meters away, other graves speak of a different truth. Men with Roman blood, Balkan farmers, steppe nomads, a world of mixing, merging, surviving. In Pannonia, the Goths were no longer a tribe apart. Their warriors rode with Huns, dined with Romans, married Balkan daughters. A culture in flux, but in a few... In warriors like Baal underscore 146, the old bloodline endured. For now. Because to the west, beyond the mountains, Italy awaited. And on the road to Italy, the Gothic lineage faced its greatest test. They crossed the Alps in winter. An army of exiles, warriors, women, children. Led by a king with northern blood. Theodoric the Great. Ostrogoth. Rome had fallen. The empire shattered. But in its heart, a new Gothic kingdom would rise. Or so they believed. But centuries later, beneath the soil of Italy, the truth lay waiting. Archaeologists unearthed the graves, Gothic burials amid Roman ruins. And when the DNA was drawn from those ancient bones, the story was more complex than anyone imagined. Yes, traces of the North remained. I won lineages, the rare signature of Gothic ancestors, woven like a ghost thread through the Italian earth. But the rest had shifted. The Gothic blood diluted, entwined with Roman, Italic, and even Balkan lines. The fierce migratory warriors had become Romanized nobility, senators, generals, adorning themselves with imperial silk, speaking the language of Caesar. Identity remade. But deep in the genes, a whisper remained. 
a fragment of a story almost forgotten. And just as Italy absorbed the Goths far to the west, across the mountains, another chapter was beginning. Because while Theodoric carved a kingdom in the ruins of Rome, another Gothic story was unfolding in the lands beyond the Pyrenees. They had marched across continents, from the Baltic to the Black Sea, through the heart of Gaul. Now the Visigoths had come to Spain, conquerors, or so the chronicles claimed. But beneath the grand cathedrals of Iberia, the graves tell a quieter story. When scientists sequenced the DNA from Visigothic burials near Girona, the results were unexpected. 73% local Iberian ancestry, only 23% northern. Even among the nobility, the Gothic conquerors had not remained apart. In just a few generations, their bloodlines had entwined with the people they once ruled. Yet in one grave, a fragment of the past survived. A male carrying the I-1 lineage, the ancient Scandinavian marker. A genetic echo of a journey that began centuries earlier beneath Nordic skies. And stranger still, in the bones of a Visigothic woman, something rarer. Asian mitochondrial DNA. C4A1A, a lineage that whispered of the steppe, of distant lands, of Hunnic storms that once swept across Europe, a mosaic of identities, fused by time, war, and kinship. By the 7th century, Visigothic and Iberian were no longer separate worlds. They were one. And yet, the deeper scientists dig, the more elusive the pure Gothic signature becomes. Which leaves us with a haunting question. Is there any true Gothic legacy left in modern Europe? And then they vanished. Not in battle. Not by sword or flame. But in blood. Across Poland, Spain, Italy. The Gothic name once echoed in law, in kingship, in fear. But in the genomes of modern Europeans, the signal is faint. A scattering of northern fragments. Threads of I-1. Wisps of Scandinavian ancestry. Nothing like the enduring imprints of Slavic migrations or the Viking Age expansions. The Goths, those great wanderers of late antiquity, blended into the lands they once conquered, not erased, not forgotten, but absorbed, a people who had shaped the map of Europe, now barely traceable in its blood, their legacy more cultural than biological. Words, laws, names of cities carved into memory, not into the genome. And yet, the story isn't finished. Because in the deepest layers of Europe's DNA, beneath the obvious patterns, strange signals still flicker. Ancestry that doesn't fit. Outliers' genetic ghosts. Hints of lost migrations, unseen by history. And in those shadows, new mysteries are emerging. They were gone. Their kingdoms fallen. Their names, fading from the chronicles. And yet, the DNA refused to forget. In the heart of the old Avar Kaganate, Warrior burials from the 7th century, a strange signal emerged. I-1, R-1B, U-106, lineages tied not to the steppe, but to the north, to Gothic blood. What were these northern signatures doing in the graves of Avar elites? Were these the sons of Gothic warriors, folded into the ranks of a new empire? The question deepened. Among the remnants of the Hunnic world, Germanic haplotypes began to appear. Tribes that once clashed with the Goths now carried their blood, and in Lombard Italy, long after the Visigoths and Ostrogoths had faded, echoes of those same Gothic male lines surfaced again. Through the chaos of post-Roman Europe, a tantalizing pattern emerged. The kingdoms had fallen, the banners were gone, but in the ranks of elite warrior brotherhoods, in the bloodlines of leaders, the Gothic imprint endured, a ghost lineage riding the tides of history. And now, with the next wave of genetic discoveries, something even more unexpected is coming into focus. A finding that may rewrite the Gothic story entirely. For centuries, the story had flowed in one direction. Migrations from the north. Scandinavians spilling south. Goths, Lombards, Vikings. But now, the DNA reveals a twist no one expected. In Denmark, around the year 800, something strange happens. A sudden rise of Central European ancestry. A shift so sharp, it caught geneticists off guard. Who were these people moving into Scandinavia? Had warriors once sent south now returned? Changed by distant lands? Were they the sons of Gothic exiles, bringing with them foreign blood, foreign alliances? Or had new powers, new elites, from the heart of Europe, 
carved their place among the Norse? Whatever the cause, the impact was profound. Scandinavia, long seen as the origin point of migrations, was itself transformed. Its gene pool reshaped, its cultural tides turned, the flow of history had reversed, and with it, the entire narrative of the Gothic migrations must be rethought. Not a simple outpouring, but a two-way exchange. A centuries-long dance of peoples, identities, and blood. Which brings us to a deeper question. So who were the Goths, really? And what does it mean to carry their story today? The deeper we look, the more the past dissolves. The Gothic saga began with clear lines. Warriors from the north, tribes on the move. But the DNA tells a different story. Bloodlines blurred. Identities transformed. Migrations that fused peoples erased boundaries, wove new cultures from the threads of old. Today, we search for Gothic genes in Europe's modern tapestry. And what do we find? Fragments. Echoes. Faint traces in a sea of blended ancestry. Because identity is not written in chromosomes alone. It's shaped by the stories we tell. The names we choose. The histories we remember and the ones we forget. The Goths were not a pure people. They were a movement, a transformation. Their legacy lives not in a single genome, but in the fusion they left behind. And so we ask, in this age of DNA tests and ancestry charts, are we defined by our blood, or by the stories we choose to tell? If you're fascinated by lost histories and ancient DNA mysteries, subscribe for more untold stories. Because next time, we follow another vanished tribe, the Lombards, and the forgotten DNA they left behind.